Good afternoon. It's been a long day. Trust me, I got my flight delayed and I had to land this morning. And yeah, I had a five month baby, so it, trust me, coming this late and coming for the session, but definitely, trust me, the session is not gonna be something very new. You're gonna enjoy it. It's gonna be full of game mode. If you're new to development, you're gonna learn something new. If you're into AI, you're gonna be surprised with what you're kind of gonna learn. So today it's gonna to be about embracing AI in Flutter and how it can be extended and how adaptable it is. I'm Kamal, um, I think Liam has kind of introduced me but still I'll let you know what my role exactly is. I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft, I'm a Google developer expert, YouTuber and a mentor. Now why do I keep introducing all these things? It could in inspire someone to be just like this. Now, advocacy role is just not about talking about one technology or you stick to a particular technology. I started working first with web, then moved on to Android, Flutter, Harmony OS, now Microsoft 365. So my journey is irrespective of what tech stack I work on, my advocacy role keeps moving on. So today it might be XYZ, tomorrow it might be something else. So as a tech developer or as a developer or as a tech enthusiastic, just don't stick to one technology. Just keep yourself open to learning new things. See how you can actually build yourself and be a better developer when compared to the rest of the world. So I always love to make my audience aware as to what my content is gonna be, not just randomly talk about it. So today you're gonna learn what exactly is Flutter. If you already know about it, good. If you don't know, you will get a glimpse of it. Then talk about AI, what are the tools required, and how you can be a part of this community. Because at the end of the day, it's all about community. When I talk about Flutter, it's an open source. So without the community, the Flutter really doesn't go hand in hand, right? So the Flutter ecosystem, user, and the community. So let's see how this all really works. And it's gonna be fun. If you don't know, it's absolutely fine because anybody into development can learn Flutter. Just take one week time and you're good to go with Flutter. But today we will cover a little bit uh, aspect of AI, how you can involve AI into Flutter if you're something very new to it. So first thing, Flutter. Flutter is this cross platform developed by Google where you can run a single code base on Android, iOS, web. Now someone must be wondering how is that I write the code one time and I'm able to run it on all three different platform. It's all about the architecture. The architecture, the layers looks in such a way that you don't really touch on the UI part. You actually write the code and you leave it to the rendering machine to take care of it. So the engine is gonna take care of it. That, that is the last layer, which will ensure that, okay, if it's web, okay, I'm gonna render it to JavaScript, compile it and display it on my web. If it's mobile, it compiles it automatically. So this is how you're able to differentiate between different devices and all you have to do is just write the code once and you're able to run it on any device, irrespective of what platform it is. So that is how efficient and flexible Flutter is all about. And it's open source and it's by Google and a lot of companies have been using Flutter. You'll be surprised to know that you've been using these apps and they all are developed on Flutter. So as I told you, it's an open source. We have an awesome ecosystem, stable and reliable. Now what if I have a product and if it's not stable, I have every time releases happening, but I have lots of breaks, janks happening, my code gets stuck, I'm not able to add any new feature on my app, then what's the point in having some new technology? But this started in 2019 and it's still ongoing with so many releases, so many uh, new features. And trust me, now we have more than 2 million subscribers using it, and we have more than 500K apps getting built every day, okay? And, um, and it, it can be built on any screen, so you'll get to see more about it. Now, there are a few features which makes Flutter really prominent. You might come up saying, okay, we have React, we have Android, and a lot of things. I have used it. It's just not that I've jumped into Flutter and I started saying, okay, Flutter is the best. No. I've worked on Android, I've worked on iOS, I've worked on all different React, everything. Now, one thing or few capabilities that makes Flutter really predominant is the UI or the reload. 
if I have to create something, I'll just have to do in 30 minutes, I'm able to good to go with creating whatever, whether it could be a hotel website, it could be a e-commerce e website, or it could be a training app, anything I would be able to understand. Because it uses a very simple language called Dart, and it is basics programming. If you know this, you're good to go with Flutter. All you need to know is a few backend things, which is all integrations available, APIs are available. So it's all that you have these bubbles and you have to just connect the bubbles. That is how it is easy to learn Flutter. Now, first thing, visual-wise, yes, the UI is so smooth, you can have control on every pixels on your screen. It's just that not that you see an app screen and you work with it. If you look at the gaming screens, you'll be surprised to see that it is all built on Flutter, and I can create the app in five minutes. If I want to create a simple 2D card game, I can do it in five minutes with a template available. So that's how easy it is. Coming to the fast, when I say fast, do I have a number? Okay, it's going to be three, three percent times, or three x times, or four x times, no. The speed is in such a way that I make a change and I'm able to see the differences immediately. That is how fast it is. It's all because of the engine, ARM, Intel, powered by it, and it's good to go. Coming to the productivity, what if I have a technology, I'm learning about it, but it is not productive. Why would a developer use it? I'm using it from morning, I keep developing a lot of things, and by the end of the day, if I'm not productive, I will never choose that particular language to my client. I, I, or I would not suggest it to my client, right? Coming to the multi-platform, which I've already spoke about it, where you have running on Android, iOS, web, anything with single code base. Developer experience. At the end of the day, I'm a developer. When I'm developing something and I'm not able to find the functionality, I'm not able to find the proper docs, support, or API, would I be able to go with this technology or would I be able to do anything with it? Definitely not. I would not suggest it, right? Flexible, it is pretty flexible to develop. So anybody with any background can work on it. Are you from Python? Are you from React? Are you from iOS? Try Flutter, you would find easy to do it. You would find whatever features have been missing on those technologies. When you come back to Flutter, you would say, okay, you know what I was missing in that technology? You know, I was able to do it here. So that is how easy Flutter is, because I've tried and experienced it. So whenever I pick up a project, I need to analyze the market. I need to know what my market really stands for. How many users are using it? Some of my, my client might come and say to me, Kamal, you know what? I'm looking for an app that kind of covers 200 million downloads. I need to cover um, daily transaction is like 10,000 per hour. So can you build or can you tell me what technology to use or what? So as a developer, I should be in a position to gauge which technology is best what could I actually use for this heavy traffic? What can I actually suggest? So you need to know your market. You need to know where your technology stands. So if I'm going to refer Flutter to someone else, I need to know what is my market. As you look at it, you can see the number of users. You can see the framework's position. You can see the development module. You can see the GitHub. In the past three to four years, GitHub has developed so much of repos. It's open source. Anybody can fork it. Anybody can work on issues. You find you work, and you can keep on moving on it. So that's how easy Flutter is all about. If you look at the popularity also, you can see the graph, how it's kind of moving from 2019 to 2023, how quickly it is moving, or how fastly people are using it. Now, as I told you, you might be surprised to know Flutter is something very new to you. Some, some might even say, I didn't even know Flutter. Trust me, these are the companies, just a sample of it, handful of it that I'm showing you. These are the companies who have developed their apps on Flutter. If you're using a Grab app, it's developed on Flutter. Surprised? If you're using Google Pay, if you're using Alibaba, Squire, Toyota, eBay, Times New York, everybody is using Flutter. That's the reason you're able to see that beautiful UI, the transitions are smooth, and it is an engaging experience. So as I told you, fast, it's all about the ARM or the Intel machine code as well as the JavaScript and fast performance. So you do a change, you swipe it or you do it, it's that quick. You don't use that old style emulator. Try out the emulator, you will be surprised to know about it, how fast it is. They have seen all the loopholes of different technologies and they have come up with Flutter where it gives you that smooth finish of it. 
Coming to the multi-platform, as I told you, write the code once and you can run it anywhere. So if my client is looking to cover entire audience, different age audience, different device audience, this would be one of the best framework to choose for. I write the code once and I'm able to run on all the devices. Now even you can run it on your embedded watch as well. That is how it's been flexible and that's how Flutter is kind of working with audience. Coming to the games. So it's just not a framework just to develop apps for e-commerce or anything. It's also for fun where you can develop casual games. Now when I say games, it is so fast or the templates are available for you. You want to build an app, I'll show you a link. Just fork the repo, change the settings or the characters or the positions and you're good to go to start with games. There are already pre-built games. There are online browser is already available called Dartpad. You open it and you'll be able to view the game there, run it on the online emulator itself and you're good to go. You don't need to install any software, you don't have to use any tools. You have online tools itself available to run your Flutter games. So these are the games that are developed. So I'll also let you know about the games that you can actually access. This is the Impeller, which is the engine that I was talking about. How is this so fast? How am I able to experience such a beautiful UI? It's all because of this Impeller. The performance, the stability, the re releases that's happening, the kind of janky effect that we used to get when we used to run an Android or any other XYZ. The emulator gets completely lost. I mean, I had to reboot, kind of work. All that is not... Im that is kind of overridden when you're using this kind of a engine mission. So as I told you, there is something called Wondrous App. If you just open your mobile and type this, you can see the UI of the app and you can see how it is built on Flutter. This is also another app where it tell, talks about the seven wonders of the world. So you just go check what are the seven wonders. It's not about the wonders of the world, it's about the UI, how you could navigate, know each of it. Each page navigation is so smooth transition wise and also so effective. I would, if I had to build something, this is one of the best UIs that I could find in the market that they have built using Flutter. And I think this was just built in a record time of 24 hours. Within 24 hours it was built. So try it out, just check out the UI. It is simply amazing. You can use it also, it's open source. That's the best part about Flutter. Okay, coming to the AI part. Now, let me give you a very simple example just to make it a little more interesting because I was kind of surprised. So as I told you, my flight got delayed. I came in today morning, so I took a Bolt app and it was kind of, kind of very flexible for me to use. So I used the Bolt app and uh, the charge was somewhere around 150 from the airport or 150 or 250, I'm not sure. So I think it was one, uh, 150. So I said confirm the driver and I got the driver, he arrived. And I came to the hotel and then I checked in, everything happened. And when I saw the bill, it was double the amount. So I was kind of surprised. Okay, uh, then I checked the trip and it was lesser amount. So, you know, it's very rush in this kind of an environment. So what I did was, okay, if I was not, if I could take myself five to maybe five years to six years back, if I had to get this refund, you know what I had to do? I had to call the support team. I had to call the, raise a ticket, then come to the transaction part, where it actually went wrong, who was your driver, where did things go wrong. So this would have at least taken me a week's time. But you know what happened when I was using the Bolt app? Just clicked on the trip part, clicked on the support, and there was this chatbot which kind of popped up, okay? And it asked me, what is the issue? I said, refund. Um, I was being charged. I used a simple sentence. I was being charged double. Immediately the chatbot kind of analyzed my data and it told, it looks like we charged you an extra so much, would you like a refund into your credit or your account? So it was that easy for me and trust me the refund was in seconds to my account. That is because the chatbot and everything behind the scene is AI. It kind of analyzed your data, it understood exactly what my problem was. I would say 95% of my problems will get resolved. I'm not gonna say, okay, it's gonna solve all your problems, no. But getting a refund for me in that time with the chatbot, it understood what exactly I was looking for and I got my refund done. So I was like, okay, you know what? AI is really working. It is kind of revolutionizing the way we work and live. Because at the end of the day, 
I need an app that is going to help me. I don't want an app that I just can keep it in my phone and not use it, right? So I'm able to use the Bolt app. I was able to get a refund and I was really happy with the kind of service the chatbot gave me, not even a human. I didn't even interact with a human there. It was just a simple chatbot. So AI is revolutionizing. So please gear up yourself to develop anything in terms of AI. Do not stick to the old school style. It's going to be completely transformed. Let me give you a very simple example. 10 years back when I started, not even 10, 15 years back when I started development, if I had to write a code or develop an app or develop a website, I had to start from the scratch, create a folder, asset folder, icons folder, source folder, model, view, controller, everything had to be done manually. But these days, I don't even have to even touch just type what is my project name and the entire folder structure with the packages, with the APIs, everything is getting projected for me. It also tells you, do you want to use this APIs because your name of your project looks travel? It also is suggesting me, do you want to use this APIs? So coding has gone to that extent. So as a developer, what is my job then? All you have to do is think creative and come up with solutions. So your job as a developer is to not worry about the tools not about the framework, not about the rest of the part, how to fix bugs, how to get an error report, how to get the analytics part. The system is there to do for it. It's the dummy machine, right? It is the dummy brain which can help you with it. But as a human real brain, what are you going to do it? You're going to come up with creative solution. That is where you play as a developer. Okay? So AI is going to transform your jobs. Already low code, no code is in place. Do not think that you can start the hello world example all the time. No. Machines are already doing way fast and I'll show you how quick it is to be done. This is one of the applications. So all I say is create an article detail page with the title tag everything. I just typed a sentence and my AI did this for me. Tell me if I had to do this in another technology how long this would have taken for me. At least a day. At least 24 hours. This does for me in seconds. All I do is type the sentence so my AI or my backend or the NLP natural process language is processing the sentence and it's creating this page for me. So what I have to do, all I have to do is go change the text, color, icon, images. That is how easy app development is getting into it. So your old school style of writing code, starting from scratch, no. Things are completely changing. So as a developer, get up yourself or embrace yourself to do something very different. Now if you ask me what tool is this? This is called Flutterflow. It's an AI generative tool. All you have to do, you don't even have to learn the language. It's all about drag and drop and you are ready to do with an app. You have a business idea, get into it, you'll be able to build an app in seconds I would tell, not even minutes, seconds you would be able to build. So look at the code. The code is already generated for you. Why would you want to type a code like this? It's already generated for you. Go and start editing it. So uh, this is another one. I just said an Italian villa and I automatically get the image. I don't even have to look for images. So if you say about the Bangkok sceneries or anything, it would give you templates. So I don't have to look for colors. I don't have to look for images. I don't have to even look for text. Maybe a few text here and there editing, edition you have to do it. Everything is getting generated for you. Even the color palette comes. Choose your color based on your theme and you're good to go. So this is all just to know that the future of coding is completely changing. So when you see some beautiful UIs like this, do you think someone would have spent like hours, days to build this? They're using tools like this. So now integrating AI in Flutter, what are the different ways? We have first one called the natural language processing machine learning and the computer vision. Now if you ask me what is this natural language processing, it's all about your chatbots, your voice assistant, where I send a query, it responds to me, like the Bolt app, which did for me this morning. I, was, I sent my query, it was able to analyze my sentence and able to give me a refund. That's what natural language processing is all about. Coming to the machine language is, it kind of analyzes your data, it kind of improves the data on it and then gives me a result. So that's all about machine learning. Coming to the computer vision, I scan an image and I'm able to get the details of the image. I scan a restaurant 
picture, I'm able to get the details where this restaurant is, how far is it from the location that I'm staying from, so it gives me all those details. One of the example, Google Lenses, have you used one? If not, try it out. You would find that small uh, rectangular icon. So if I kind of zoom it on that lady's picture, I get all the images or all the dresses related to that, whether it's dress or even a flower, anything. So that's how AI is playing a vital role in mobile development. So if I have to implement this, say for example, you're building an e-commerce website, your client says, okay, I'm building the shopping app, can you make it more exciting for customers to use it? I wanna ensure people are using my app, how do I do it? Implement this, you would have tons of customers coming. I wanna see a dress, okay, the same thing, I wanna see how it looks on a different website, what is the price comparison, where all it's available, what are the different colors available, all I have to do is just click on the Google lens and I'm able to get the pictures, different website prices, and you're good to go. Amazon Lex, so as I told you, I wanna book a flight ticket. I wanna book a flight ticket on which, from which city to which city, which date, and I get a book confirmed. That is how easy it is. Navigating, selecting the seats, everything is happening through chatbots these days. Tell me where is a human interaction happening? Because machines are taking over us, they're analyzing the data, they're telling us exactly what is our cause. Unless if it's a very complicated case, definitely you need a human interaction. Check out this VivaFit, one of the, one other app that I was kind of amazed with. Initially we had to go to the gym or something, hit a gym, we need a trainer, right? A personal trainer. These days I don't need one, an AI and a mobile app is enough for me. It tells me how many stretches I've done, exactly is my hand position right? my leg positions, or is my position right for the exercise that I'm working out? It tells me how many calories I've burnt. It tells you how many count. Am I good going? You have a voice assistance which keeps telling you, okay, you're working out. It keeps encouraging you. It keeps talking to you. That is what we are looking, right? So you don't have to hit the traffic, go to a gym, work, and come back. Switch on this AI app, and you're able to do it. So to experience AI, try out these apps. And these all are getting built on Flutter. So try and see how it works. So what are the advantages of AI? Now, as I told you, I've been talking about AI we are using. Now, we need to understand why should I really use it? First thing is user experience. At the end of the day, me as a user, if I'm not happy with the app that I'm using, why would I even go for it, even if it has spent million dollars on it, building it? Or even there are million customers using it. If I'm not happy the way it is, I will definitely not use it, right? So it's giving a user experience searching a place or using a product or anything is so easy, smooth, transitions are happening, definitely I'll go with it. It is providing an engaging experience. All I do is I type just Bangkok and I get everything related to Bangkok, what are the places to visit, duration from my um, location where I'm living, the currency change, because if I'm from a different country, I don't have to keep changing the currency, go to Chrome, check out the currency, come back here. So if it's giving me all that extensibility, why would I not use that app? So you don't, as a developer, don't think about all this. The AI will help you with all this because it's gonna analyze your data. So it's gonna check your location, where are you from? Okay, you are from India, you're from INR currency. Okay, you're coming to Bangkok, you're in a different Thai currency. So it, it analyzes all these data and that's what AI plays the important role here. So increased productivity. As a developer, you need to increase. You cannot sit on a particular feature building from day one until day 10, you're still building it, telling, okay, I'm still building it. No, right? It increases your productivity, how productively you're building features. Coming to the revenue stream, tell me an app that is just built for passion. Maybe one or two apps are there. Everybody wants to do business. Everybody wants to earn money, right? Everybody wants to become a millionaire, right? Building an app. So build an app that kind of generates revenue. AI apps will definitely help you because that's how this generation people are expecting. They don't know the language, they don't know the content, but they're still using the app. How are they using it? AI is helping in the background. So coming to the frameworks that we use in Flutter is one is the Flutter MLT kit, toolkit, one more is the TensorFlow PyTorch. It might be if you're very new to Flutter, these are plugins and packages. All you have to do is just enter the details and you're good to go to use the package. You don't have to download the package, use it in your system, no. That's not how Flutter works. 
you just go to your yaml file dependencies just type pytorch and there is this version number so you just have to do it and then compile it and you're good to go with the packages that's how easy it is in flutter now coming to the face destruction mask so this is one of the app built by one of the developers from the Flutter community where it tells you if that person is holding a mask or not. Say if there is a crowd of 500 people and I don't know who is wearing mask, am I going to make individual person move? I use this app, it tells me, okay, this person is not wearing, this person is wearing, we'll be able to use. So this is also developed in Flutter. I'll give you the link of all this report, try it out, see how it works. Just fork the repo, go to your IDE or fork the repo, open the online dart pad and you'll be able to run these applications. So this is where AI really comes into picture. Now how to integrate AI in Flutter, it's, I won't get too much technical into it. Let's cover the basic part of it. First you need to understand what is the model that you're going to use, whether NPL, ML or cost computer vision, which one are you going to use? Understand the model that you're going to use. Because I'm creating a chatbot and will I go for a machine learning? No. Will I go for a computer vision of analyzing my image? No. Then definitely I'll go for an, an NLP, natural process language, right? So check out the AI services. There are a lot of cloud services, including Ma Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud services. They are readily available. APIs are readily available. Integrate them. Use them. Do not start something from scratch. Keep yourself updated with docs. Keep yourself updated with releases. That is what a good, I mean, I wouldn't say a good developer, a growing developer differentiates between a developer. Check out the releases that's happening. There you would find a bug or something getting fixed that you've been working on it from a very long time. So always use the AI services. There might be a few on-device AI also available. So try using them, plugins and packages, which will really help you in this case. Okay, coming and choosing an AI framework. How do I choose? I told you, understand your project, understand your task. My task is to identify an image, tell me what this image is all about. Say I post a picture of a doll, it tells me whether it's a Russian doll or a Chinese doll or Indian doll, tells the color of it, what is the origin of it, history of it, simple. I'm done with the job. So choose your task, understand which model is required, documentation and support, size and complexity, analyze all these parts, and then performance. Performance also plays an important role. What if my app is dragging me, taking a very long time to get something done? Definitely I'll not use it, right? So all these points have to be remembered while developing an app. It's just not about choosing a framework, start with the UI, connect with the backend and you're done with the job. Okay, client asks for something, I'm done with it. No, this is how you have to think as a developer. So another game, this is an IO flip game. Simple, why am I talking about this game is, let me show you this. This game uses image, Google's generative, AI generative. It generates the own images. So it's a card game, it's a classic 2D game where you can easily use it, you, you can actually work on this code as well. It's open source actually. So you choose your character, you choose your position, you choose your power, select the card, it has a few numbers on it, whichever is the highest number, it beats the card and that's how it is. Now the best part about Flutter is all this integration part you don't have to do manually. Whether connecting to the database, the leadership board, the crash report, getting the plugins, everything is readily available. All you have to do is just connect the dots and you're good to go. So this game is available to use, try using it, simple as it is. This is also a classic 2D game which is built on Flutter. It's just not about apps, it's not about games, it's also about creating apps like this. So I say, what is Flutter? This is again another AI. It tells you, it gives you a doc in a format of a AI. So I say, what is Flutter? It tells me, okay, this is a flashcard kind of a thing. It tells me what is Flutter. And then if I like it or not like it, or it goes to the next step. So documents are coming in a form of a flashcard these days. So if I had to read an Android doc or an iOS doc, I used to have this huge text documents available, right? So these days you have these kind of flashcards coming to the point, crisp to the point, what word are you looking for? And it gives you a response. Look at the Dart API docs that I was talking about. So it asks you, okay, are you okay with this? 
look at the flash card because i'm not going to look into the entire thing i just need that one two information i'm good to go that is what the details i'm looking for right so this is how ai is playing an important role here okay now i've spoke about flutter i've spoke about ai but flutter is all about community flutter is an open source it's all about community how you can be a part of it i am a google developer expert in flutter now how i came here is through this community every day there is every weekly there's a hump day q and a happening you can talk to the entire flutter developers throughout the world it's free of cost you just have to be on the call you have any project that you're getting built get into it talk to people they're going to help you with it there are also going to be google employees there who will be helping you with solving your problems we have flutterista which is specifically designed for women who wanted to be interested to be a part of flutter community you can get into this we have reddit we have twitter just type flutter you would get all the communities available be a part of it and stack overflow meetups and games discord is also available in case you want to be a part of it just let me know i'll be here i'll give you the link you can be a part of it as well so if you are interested to explore flutter i'm not saying go learn flutter explore it taste it you like it give it a try that's what my question is all about here so resources i'm not going to say follow them follow you know go ahead with the bible as the um official docs they are good enough to go you don't have to follow anybody as of now to understand what is flutter the documents are pretty simple here just give it a try and everything is fine here this is my handles you can follow me here ping me let me know if you have any questions um you want to be a part of community you want to try flutter or you want to try on a different tech stack i also work for microsoft so i work on m365 you want to be part of the mvp you want to be part of the google developer expert community or you just want to be organizing any flutter community anything just let me know i'll help you connect to the people if i'm not able to help you here right now at least i'll connect you to the person right person so that they can help you with that more thank you so much all right any <coughs> questions yeah have anyone have any questions <laughs> all right so no worries if you don't have questions or you get something later just ping me on these handles i'll be glad to assist you okay thank you so much all right thank you thank you for your talk